Energy, the ability to light up the world, keep us warm, connected, and moving forward. What if you could capture that energy, hold on to it, and then use it to provide more moments of harmony? Fresh air, clean water, and rich soil, vibrant communities, and healthy cities, groundbreaking industry, and revitalize local businesses. At Bedrock, we bridge time-honored ideas with modern applications to preserve and reuse energy. This is what we do. Store. Restore. Respect. Safely using what already exists to create more moments of joy. Protect our environment and enrich Ontario and Ontarians. This is how the future of energy is stored. Together, we preserve, innovate, and grow. We do this so that Ontarians can enjoy more, in harmony with nature, as groundbreaking stewards of Canada's zero emissions future. We love the sound of that. Bedrock, compressed air energy storage. Good day, everyone. My name is Evan Tamillo, Director of Research and Vendor Relations at Bedrock. And joining me is Tanya Mackey, our Director of Project Management, who frankly, even now is keeping me on task. From the both of us on behalf of Bedrock, we would like to extend our appreciation for being able to present today on the exciting developments within our project their implications from a regulatory and electrical grid operations perspective, and finally, how esteemed members of this group are positively contributing to a green future while leveraging the experience and insights developed over the last century. Indeed, the time has come for widespread adoption of energy storage technologies. Multiple levels of governments, both domestically and internationally, have set ambitious greenhouse gas emission reduction plans driving not only greater adoption of electrification in our daily lives, but ensuring the electricity sector itself transitions to a greenhouse gas-free system, enter in bedrock. Beginning with the basics, bedrock is an early stage energy storage project developer with a focus on grid scale storage solutions. Our current project is a compressed air energy storage development denoted as the Bayfield and Stanley facility located in the municipality of Blue Water, Ontario. Both Bayfield and Stanley are Silurian Pinnacle Reef porous rock reservoirs, which reside in close proximity to one another, roughly 10 kilometers apart. Both reservoirs were formerly natural gas production facilities, which will now be connected via a compressed air pipeline. Before launching into an overview of the technical developments associated with the projects, please take a moment to enjoy this brief video on Bedrock's case system. As we move to a clean energy future, how do we balance Ontario's peak energy demands with the intermittent supply from many renewables? Bedrock has the solution with CASE, or Compressed Air Energy Storage. Here's how it works. During off-peak hours when power generation is high and demand is low, Bedrock takes surplus electricity off the grid to store for later use. This surplus energy drives a series of air compressors, and the compressed air is injected into huge underground reservoirs at our Bayfield and Stanley facilities in Ontario. With the air at 1,176 PSI, these two reservoirs can store up to 520 megawatts, enough energy to power 624,000 homes. That's equivalent to all of the homes in Hamilton, London, and Waterloo region combined. Later, when energy demand is high, the compressed air is released to drive turbines and generate clean, sustainable, and reliable energy, powering family life, small businesses, and agriculture in our towns, as well as meeting the demands of big cities and preventing brownouts and other issues. With renewable energy on the rise, Bedrock's compressed air energy storage 
bridges the gap between clean energy supply and demand, all without the emissions of fossil fuel plants nor the environmental impact of large-scale battery storage. Bedrock, compressed air energy storage, building Ontario's energy storage solutions. Not to steal my colleague's thunder, but perhaps the most exciting updates we can provide relate to the technological aspects of the project. From transitioning the equipment configuration by ensuring a completely green project, to connecting the individual reservoirs via an air pipeline, there's been a whirlwind of progress as we near our detailed engineering phase. Beginning with the equipment itself, when last presenting here, Bedrock was contemplating pursuing a more traditional system configuration, referred to as a diabatic process. Traditional case systems accounted for the adiabatic cooling process, wherein releasing pressurized air causes freezing by heating the discharging air via an accelerant. In this case, natural gas was assumed to serve that role before converting to hydrogen. A combination of future environmental considerations, coupled with uncertainty related to green hydrogen industry adoption timelines, forced Bedrock to seriously reconsider its options. After diligently studying alternatives, we honed in on an exciting, proven solution that mitigates the need for burning even an ounce of fuel. The solution? Taking advantage of the adiabatic process in its entirety, from compression to expansion by replacing certain intercoolers between compression stages with heat exchangers, our case system will recover waste heat and retain it within a series of thermal energy storage tanks, TES for short. When heat is needed during the discharge cycle, heat is transferred from the TES tanks to our air expander turbines, where it mixes with the discharging air, driving the turbine generator assembly. The next big update should have everyone here teeming with excitement. In March 2022, after taking into consideration the concerns of local stakeholders regarding our method of connection between both Bayfield and Stanley, Bedrock made the bold decision to forego an electrical connection in favor of connecting them via a 60-inch compressed air pipeline, thus preserving the surface routing for the benefit of impacted landowners. Not only does this new direction allow Bedrock to co-locate the turbo machinery for both reservoirs on one site, it also allows Bedrock to effectively treat both reservoirs as one, offering greater flexibility in meeting the dynamic demands of a provincial grid. With that update, I would like to hand off the hot seat to Tanya, who will provide an update on the passing of our case regulation and our positive interactions with natural resources and forestry staff. Another exciting update is uh, related to the regulation and work with the Ministry of Northern Development Mines and Natural Resources and Forestry. As compressed air energy storage and porous rock would be an innovative application in Ontario, it is with great appreciation that we received the amended regulation from the Ontario government to allow us to proceed. We want to thank each and every person at the Ministry of Northern Development Mines, Natural Resources and Forestry, further referred to as the MNRF, who was involved in making this happen as without it, the project would not be possible. The amended regulation under the Oil, Gas and Salt Resources Act for exploration, drilling and production will ensure there are proper checks and balances of the wells and injection programs into the reservoirs, ensuring we conform to established standards and norms observed by any other storage facility regulated by the Ontario Energy Board. It should come as great comfort to both industry and general public alike, as well as Bedrock as a developing entity that Ontario can achieve a clean transition without having to necessarily reinvent the wheel. The technical know-how that has helped heat our homes for decades with the utmost reliability will continue to do so and more through our compressed air energy storage project and others like it. Beyond the technical considerations of this project though, there is a true sense of environmental stewardship underpinning Bedrock's compressed air energy storage system. With minimal topographical impact relative to contemporary energy storage solutions, Coupled with repurposing a reservoir otherwise destined for natural gas, Bedrock remains committed to meeting the needs of a generation yet to come. We are fortunate to have a public service who remains committed to those same high standards. Within the requirements of the application is a comprehensive and thorough consultation process and period affording Ontarians and Indigenous communities alike the opportunity to ensure environmental accountability beyond Ontario's requirements. 
On this front, we look forward to working with the Ministry of MNRF throughout this process to consult and collaborate with Indigenous groups, other ministries, and the public. As we are an emission-free project, we feel that passing this regulation is a strong indication of the desire for the public and private sector to work together on environmental stewardship and allowing new innovations to excel. These two important items will work together at the benefit of the public. In closing, we would like to take this opportunity to thank OPI for affording Bedrock the opportunity to present today on a truly exciting path forward, not only for our humble project, but indeed this resilient industry. It is not without precedent to see established skills and practices transfer over at critical moments in history. Presenting remotely, I am reminded of the early days of 2020. Brewers and distillers throughout Ontario pivoted production to bolster supplies of sanitizers, harnessing the technical expertise they had come to rely upon in their trade. The technical challenges facing a technology such as compressed energy storage are not so dissimilar from those faced by esteemed attendees, routing a pipeline, designing well drilling programs, sizing compressors for optimal airflow are all routine considerations for this industry. And that experience is invaluable. With Bedrock's K's project, such a moment may soon be upon us where established industry can help drive an innovative transition, where a methodical public service continues to develop a framework ensuring projects like ours are built and operated in the public interest, and where Ontarians enjoy the benefits of grid scale, reliable energy storage built to last for decades to come. Thank you, and I'll be available during the question period.